I've spent every day the last three years writing about the Porsche auction market, and the number one model I get questions about from thousands of newsletter subscribers is the 992.1 GT3. I get questions like what options add the most value, and what kind of premium does a Touring have over a Wing GT3, and of course, what do you think this paint to sample car will sell for? In this video, I'm going to pull 992.1 GT3 data from over 15,000 Porsche auctions I've studied and break down which options actually move the needle. This data set consists of 218 GT3s, 124 of those are Tourings, and 94 are Wing cars, all sold via online auctions like Bring a Trailer, Cars and Biz, and P Car Market. Starting with the Tourings, the three options that everyone looks for are carbon brakes, carbon buckets, and of course, paint a sample. But to get a baseline, we'll take a look at cars without any of those options. Tourings without those three options, well, they average $252,600. But what's really interesting is that PDK cars average higher than six-speed cars, $256,800 compared to $250,900. And that held true across all mileage ranges. The clearest mileage bucket was cars less than 500 miles and those with over 2,000. Those low mileage PDK examples, they averaged 271,000. And six speeds, well, they averaged 267,000, which wasn't much of a difference. But when we look at those higher mileage examples, it actually gets quite significant. PDK Tourings with over 2,000 miles, they averaged 247,300. Six speeds, they averaged 230,000. That's a 7.5% difference, and it's probably in the complete opposite direction than what most people think. Now that we know what our baseline is, let's take a look at how options start to affect price. Out of those 124 Tourings, we have 19 cars with just carbon brakes. Those 19 cars averaged 266,900. That's about a 6% bump. But unlike base cars, manuals with carbon brakes, their average was higher at 271,000 versus PDKs at 263,200. And that difference, it becomes more pronounced the higher you went in the mileage range. Sub 500, pricing was about even, but as you climbed above 2,000 miles, the difference was almost 10%, or about $23,000 in favor of the manuals. What this tells me is that for stripper GT3 Tourings, PDKs get the extra kick because their MSRP was higher, but once performance starts getting added to the equation, buyers, well, they want to roll their own gears, which makes complete sense. Next, we'll take a look at a highly debated option, carbon buckets. Some say they're a must, while others, well, they say otherwise. But what does the market actually say? We can't really compare our baseline cars to cars with just carbon buckets because there were only three cars, and that just wasn't enough, but there were plenty of cars equipped with carbon brakes and carbon buckets, and they were all six speeds. Carbon buckets, when added to manual tourings with carbon brakes, averaged $272,600. That's just a $1,600 increase, which isn't a whole heck of a lot. And this held true when breaking down the mileage buckets. A little bit of a bump, nothing too crazy. But the difference in manual tourings with carbon brakes and carbon buckets, they average 250,900, which brings our total bump over base to about an 8.7% increase. The real bump, however, of course, comes with paint to sample. Interestingly, tourings with just paint to sample and no carbon brakes or carbon buckets, they were all manual cars and they all had higher mileage. Those PTS-only examples averaged 251,300, which was a 9.1% jump over the higher mileage manuals from our base set. The real jump, however, comes when you have the trifecta of options, carbon brakes, carbon buckets, and paint to sample. Manual tourings with all three options, they averaged 290,700 versus 272.6 for cars with just carbon brakes and buckets. That's about a 6% increase. When comparing our baseline manual average though, that was a 16% jump, about $40,000 more. Now let's take a look at wing cars. Base 992.1 GT3s averaged $232,100. That's about a $20,000 discount when compared to base Tourings. And just like Tourings, PDK cars edged out six-speed cars with an average price of $233,400 versus $231,300. 
also just like Torings, the averages flip when you add carbon breaks. PDK GT3s average 239.5, 6 bs average 258.7, which is quite a significant bump over the base average of 231, 250. And when you add carbon buckets to those carbon ceramic equipped cars, you see about a 3% increase in price, which is slightly more than what we saw when we added buckets to Torings. But that 3% increase, we had to look at all GT3s, PDK and 6-speed, as our sample size, well, it started out small and it got even smaller once we started adding the options in. Keeping sample size in mind, Adding PTS to GT3s with the carbon brakes and carbon buckets increased the average price for both PDKs and 6 speeds to $256,100, which was less than a $7,000 jump. Um, not a whole hell of a lot. When we began comparing base GT3s to base Tourings, we saw a $20,000 difference. And once we added the big three options, that difference pretty much stayed the same, only increasing roughly $22,000. So when you look at the entire 992.1 GT3 landscape, the story is actually pretty consistent across both body styles. Lightly optioned cars lean toward PDK, whether it's a Touring or a Wing GT3. But the second you start stacking the big three options, carbon brakes, carbon buckets, a paint to sample, manuals pull ahead every time. For Tourings, PCCB alone gives you about an 8% bump. Buckets push that a little higher, and when you add PTS into the mix, you're looking at a nearly 60% premium over base manuals. Wing GT3s follow the same pattern, just with lower starting numbers. Base GT3s trail base Tourings by about $20,000, and even when fully optioned, that gap barely moves. Across both trims, PDK wins in the base configurations, manuals win when buyers are hunting for performance and rarity, and PTS continues to be the one strong value driver of the entire GT3 ecosystem. At the end of the day, options matter, but how they stack together matters even more. And if you're out there hunting for a 992.1 GT3, knowing exactly where the premiums show up is the difference between overpaying and getting a deal or landing the right car entirely. If you found this breakdown useful, this is the kind of insight I share every day in the Stuttgart Market Letter. And if you're buying or selling a 992.1 GT3, you'll find this data set inside BitterIQ.